Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. You know, with your interest in the EV world, I figured this topic would be right up your alley. Yeah, it's a big one for sure. We're talking about the Porsche Taycan recall. And we're using this recent podcast episode, kind of like our jumping off point, to really get into it. Sounds good. So to set the scene a bit, Porsche, they've issued two recalls for the Taycan. Two? Yeah, two separate ones. For Taycans made between 2020 and 2024. Wow, that's a lot of cars. It's a lot of cars potentially affected, for sure. And the main culprit, battery problems. Seems like there's a risk of uh, a short circuit in those battery modules. Oh, that's not good. Not good at all. Not good at all. And you know what that could lead to, right? Overheating, maybe even a fire. Yeah, you don't want to be driving around with that in the back of your mind. Definitely not. And the podcast episode, it really highlighted how big this recall is. We're talking almost 28,000 vehicles. That's a significant chunk of all the Taycans they've made. Wow. That really puts it into perspective, doesn't it? For now, Porsche is saying owners should limit charging to 80% until they can get those battery modules swapped out. But, and this is the catch, the timeline for that is still pretty murky. So people are just kind of left hanging. It seems that way, yeah. <laughs> and it makes you think, you know, we talk so much about the promise of EVs, this big shift to a greener future, but then something like this happens with a brand like Porsche. No less. It definitely makes you wonder, right? It, it really does. It makes you wonder if this could make people think twice about jumping on the EV bandwagon. And there's another layer to this whole thing, too. The podcast, it mentioned that the battery supplier for the Taycan is LG Energy Solution. Okay. Yeah. And they've had some battery issues in the past, remember? The Chevy Bolt recall a few years back. Oh, right. Those bolts, they had a rough time with their batteries, didn't they? I had almost forgotten about that whole thing. Oh, guess who supplied the batteries for those vehicles? Don't tell me. LG Energy Solution. It's like deja vu, isn't it? Yeah. Makes you wonder what's going on over there. It's kind of like, you know, you hear that saying, lightning never strikes twice. Right. But when it comes to LG and batteries, it's like, maybe not so true, huh? It really makes you think, doesn't it? And, you know, the podcast, it actually dug into this a little bit. They mentioned that the battery modules for the Taycan, the ones having issues, they were actually made at LG's factory in Poland. So it's like, hmm, maybe this isn't just a random thing. Like, a one-off. Exactly. Could it be something bigger, something systematic with their production? That's the question, isn't it? And if it is, well, that could be a big deal for EVs in general. Yeah. It's not just a Porsche problem then. Exactly. It's the whole industry. And you know what else I thought was interesting? The podcast touched on this too, this whole thing about Porsche releasing that new Taycan model, the Turbo GT YSAC right in the middle of this recall. Talk about awkward timing. Yeah, it's a bold strategy, for sure. On the one hand, you could see it as them trying to, I don't know, maybe distract from the recall a little, show everyone they're still at the top of their game. Right, like, look over here, shiny new car. Exactly. But then again, you could also see it as a little, I don't know. Tone deaf. Yeah, maybe. Like, imagine you just got that recall notice for your Taycan, and then you see Porsche rolling out this even faster, more expensive version. You'd be like, are you serious right now? Right. Like, are you focused on fixing the problem or just trying to outrun it with a fancy new model? That's a good point. And, you know, speaking of fixes, the podcast mentioned that Porsche claims Taycan's build after, I think it was April 3rd, 2024, that those are fine. They said something about improved battery quality. Right, but they were pretty vague on the details, weren't they? Very vague. And knowing you, I bet that drives you nuts. A little bit, yeah. I mean, what does improved battery quality even mean? Did they just tweak something small in the manufacturing process? Or did they make some big change to the battery chemistry, the cooling system? Who knows? It's like they're saying, trust us, we fixed it, but they won't tell you how. Exactly. And in this situation, especially with something as important as a car battery, you need more than just a trust us. They need to be transparent, lay it all out there if they want people to feel confident again. It kind of makes you think about the big picture here, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if a company like Porsche, with their reputation for, you know, building amazing cars. Right. Top-notch engineering. Exactly. If they can run into these kinds of problems, what does that mean for the future of EVs as a whole? It's a question a lot of people are probably asking themselves right now. I mean, you see something like this and it makes you wonder if it can happen to Porsche, can it happen to any EV? It definitely plants that seed of doubt, doesn't it? It does. It's like we're all so excited about this EV revolution, but then you have this this bump in the road. And it's not just any bump, right? It's a pretty significant one, especially when it comes to something as crucial as the battery. 
that's the heart of an EV. And if people can't trust that... It throws the whole thing off. Exactly. And that's why this whole transparency thing is so important. Portia, they need to be upfront about what went wrong, how they're fixing it, and what they're doing to prevent it from happening again. Because just saying, we've improved the battery. Right. It's not enough. Not anymore. Not after this. People uh, need specifics. They need reassurance. Absolutely. And you know what else I was thinking about? This whole thing with battery degradation. It's it, a real it, thing, right? Oh, yeah. Batteries, they have a lifespan. Even with the best care, they're not going to last forever. So even if they replace the modules now, what about five years down the line? Ten years. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And it's something I'm sure potential EV buyers are thinking about. You're dropping a lot of money on one of these cars. You need to know that the battery's not going to crap out on you a few years later. Right. It's a big investment. And this whole situation with Porsche, it could really be a turning point for the entire EV industry. How they handle it, the decisions they make, it's going to set a precedent for everyone. Wow. So Porsche is really into the microscope here. Big time. The whole world's watching. If they can acknowledge the issue, be transparent, and offer real solutions, not just quick fixes. It could actually strengthen the industry. Exactly. It could build trust, show that they're serious about addressing these challenges. But if they try to sweep it under the rug, pretend it's not a big deal. That could really backfire. Oh, absolutely. It could set the whole EV movement back years. Man, that's a lot to unpack. It really is. But hey, that's what we're here for, right? to dig into these complex issues, try to make sense of it all. Exactly. And hopefully give our listeners some things to think about along the way. That's the goal. Knowledge is power, as they say. Well said. Well, that was quite the deep dive, wouldn't you say? A big thanks to you, as always, for walking us through it all. Happy to be here. Always a pleasure to chat about this stuff. And to everyone listening, we hope you found this deep dive insightful and maybe even a little thought-provoking. The world of EVs is changing fast, and we're here to help you navigate it every step of the way. Until next time.